video on progesterone levels and different machines and how some of you are getting it absolutely wrong, including vets. So <clears throat> the problem you run into is different machines report different numbers at the same point in a progesterone cycle. And so I'll give you an example. An IDEX machine typically report about a 15 when a dog is ready to be bred, which on a fine care machine would be a 17 or higher, and on a midividus is 30, and they're all reading in nanograms. Why the hell they don't all calibrate to the same level, I can't tell you, but it doesn't matter because what we're looking for is the shape of the graph. It doesn't matter what the numbers are you're getting. It's completely irrelevant. Don't get too worried about the numbers, especially if you're not really familiar with the machine that's being used. What you're looking for is a rapid increase in progesterone numbers when the dog ovulates. Okay, an important point here, by the way, when we're talking about people in Europe, Canada, they report in nanomoles, and you have to multiply the nanograms that we're using in America by 3.18 to get to the same, same level. So an example would be a 15 on an IDEX would be closer to a 48 if you're reading it in nanomoles. So just be aware of this. These numbers I'm talking about now are numbers that you'd see in the US, but it doesn't matter because, again, what matters is this sudden jump in numbers that signifies ovulation. All right, so PG Kirk curve, it's not to scale. Um, it's gonna go up a lot higher when a dog's in, uh, after it's been bred, or whether it's been bred or not. If a dog's had a heat cycle, the numbers are gonna be 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. Way off the chart here. We don't care about that right now. And by the way, the other end of this, you know, I tell you that it's 61 days from AI. Well, it's going to be 71, 72 because we're AIing around day 11. So that is 61 days to typically when the PG level is dropping down below 3, uh, 3 to 3.5. That is your target point to be doing a C-section. That's not what this video is about. This video is about how to interpret progesterone levels regardless of what machine was used and what numbers it was reported in. So... How do you do it? It's easy. What you're looking for, so let's just talk about a classic dog. Now, remember your dog, not necessarily gonna be the same, but a classic dog. Classic dog shows first blood here, we're calling it day zero. We're not talking about swelling, that was over here, behavior towards other dogs, that was over here, maybe. We're talking about first drops of blood, day zero. We're gonna do our first test, probably somewhere around here, first test. Why do we wait till then? Because you can see until they get to about day five, the numbers are rising very slowly and she's probably sub a one at that point. Um, so we, there's no point in doing a test here. It's meaningless. Don't, don't waste your money. This is the point that she's probably dropping really pretty dark blood. And this is the point where typically most dogs are ovulating around day nine and, and the blood color has gone pink maybe even vanilla in color, and gets lighter as we get into this point here to the point that it stops completely somewhere up in this level here. Okay, so on our standard dog, ovulates on day nine, we get a progesterone test. On an IDEX machine, it's going to be something around a five. Now, it's the absolute number that we care about because remember, if we're looking at, for instance, a mini Vitus machine, this number might be more like a 12 but don't worry about the actual number. What we want to see is whatever that number was then, that it goes up the next day by about 1.5 times. So if it was a five on an IDEX, we want to see this about an eight on an IDEX. And then it's going to go up one and a half times again, and that gets us to this 15, because that's one and a half times again. So you can see, and this is one and a half times again. So, every, so you can see here, look, it took a whole five days to go up one point. Then it took another one, two, three, four days to go up four points. It's going slowly, very slowly, pretty slowly. Bingo. That's the number we're looking for. That is the point we want to see on our graph because we want to see and do an AI basically two days after the beginning of ovulation. Why do we do it two days later? Because the eggs have to migrate down and be able to be mature enough to be fertilized. If you do it early, you probably have a small litter. And by the way, all of this is about 
not getting small litters or getting no-shows or singleton puppies. That's why we're doing this. We, obviously, everybody wants to have a litter of you know six, seven, eight, ten puppies. If you AI too early or too late, it's going to impact litter size, and you're going to have a small litter on, or a no-show. All right, so uh, the point I'm trying to get across to everybody here is, and this, I get so many calls on this, um, that I beat my head against the wall sometimes telling people over and over again they want an absolute number. It's not about the absolute number, and I don't care what machine you've been using. We want to see this thing jump up one and a half times over the days before number, and that means that she's probably ovulated. And we want to see that next day go up one and a half times, and that confirms that she really did ovulate here. And by the way, this is an important point about this. A lot of people will take a particular number, and they'll say, oh, she's ovulated, bing, bang, bong, let's breed the dog in two days. That will work 80% of the time, but it will absolutely get you in trouble 20% of the time, because the dog, actually, the numbers have stalled out. She's, she's running a line like this, or she's even gone down like this. So it's very important that the moment you do your AI, that you do another PG test to make sure that the numbers really are where they're supposed to be. Because if they're not, then there's no point doing the AI. Hang on to the semen, don't collect from the dog if you can, wait for the next day or two and test again. If you're way up on here, then your choices are to do a TCI or a surgical because you can do those a day later than the vaginal. Why? Because the semen, the sperm, does not have to swim all the way up the vaginal tract to get to the eggs, and that basically shaves a day off the process. So the reason that you'd be doing this is because either you're late, you've got poor quality semen, you're having trouble getting the dog bred before. Those are all reasons that you might do a transcervical or a surgical insemination. But the important point here is, is to make sure that the numbers have been jumping up one and a half times for a couple of days to let you know that you're really at the right place and that you're not somewhere down here and you're about to mess up. And it doesn't matter, you know, if you've got a machine, you know, people have got machines to ask me these questions after they've had machines for a while. They don't really understand the process. The process is numbers go up dramatically after ovulation. And if you're not seeing that and the numbers are bouncing around, you've either got a prolonged or a stalled out heat and it's not ready to AI yet. There's no point AIing a day or, a, you know, a day early is probably okay. Three days early, nah, probably not going to get much of a litter. Three days late, it's definitely going to impact litter size. And that's the other thing about it. So what I like to do is to try to do an AI on when it's doubled for two, when the numbers have gone up one and a half times, two days in a row, I'll do my first AI. And then I like to wait two days and do another AI and make sure I'm up in here somewhere. And I do a test to make sure on a fine care machine that I'm like at a 25 or higher on a fine care machine. And by the way, I've got that wrong there. That would be more like a 30. It's the wrong, wrong way around. That'd be more like a 30 on a fine care because fine care is higher. And that would be more like, um, and that number, and that would be about a 48 on a mini vitus. But again, I don't want to get stuck on numbers. I mean, there's iChroma, there's all, there's P4, there's all kinds of machines out there. And you'd think they'd all would read the same thing if they report it in nanograms, that they'd all be reporting the same number at the same point. I promise you, they do not. Why the hell they can't all get standardized on this it blows my mind. But it's the way it is. So again, just to reiterate, what you're looking for is this dramatic increase after ovulation where it jumps up one and a half times the number. If this was a 10, we want to see one and a half times a 10 is something around, you know, a, a, a um, 15. You know, if you're, again, don't get worried about the specific number. Worry that when you multiply that number by 1.5, you're about in the right place. And you want two days of that to be in the right place. All right. So uh, I've now wasted all of your time, but it's important. And I hope I helped you get a bigger letter. Thanks for watching. Bye.